In this video, I've put together all the random yard work we did in the month of September. We are in southwest Michigan, so there are always loads of projects to get done before winter. The average high temperatures for us this time of year are in the 70s, but like a lot of places in the U.S., it's been running hot. I decided I didn't want these mums to flower yet, so I'm cutting them back. Not sure if this is a good idea, but I'm hoping they'll look better later into the fall. They tend to get too tall and tip over when they flower. These snapdragons were grown from seeds we collected from last year's flowers. They also get really tall if I don't cut them back. I'm cutting these to take inside. I love how easily the leaves pull off. Not really yard work, but just some random items from vacation I needed to wash. I always wash the hamper and shoe bag with some dish soap and the hose. It's way easier than doing it inside. Now we're moving on to trimming the shrubbery. This is what it is looking like. I really want everything significantly cut back. I put down some cardboard to help collect the branches and leaves. It's especially unpleasant to collect the debris off of these barberries. The thorns can be really long and they go right through my regular gardening gloves. Another barberry. I hate cutting off all the beautiful maroon color. But we just get to it when we have time, so at least it gets done. I don't know the right time of year to trim these, but all of the stuff we've planted here seems really hardy, except the boxwoods nowadays because they are infected with what I think is called a leaf miner. I mean, if we were trimming something really expensive, I'd probably take the time to figure out the best time, but these are not those plants. The cardboard is really helping with cleanup. I believe this is a golden barberry. This boxwood has put on a lot of growth. I'm not sure what shape it should be. I don't think everything should be round. Decided to try more of a straight sided shape. I'll just have to look at it for a few days to see if I like it. Worked a little more on straightening the edging. And I don't know when it was added in, but this paver is just randomly way cleaner than the rest. I think I need to move it. It's bothering me now that I noticed it. This sedum has really bounced back. The deer or the rabbits ate it almost to the ground. This rose bush has flowered prolifically this summer. I have cut back the new growth, but it's very determined to be taller. Now we're cutting off the old blooms. I need to take some time to learn about rose care this winter. So I don't know about you, but we've gathered multiple birdhouses that the kids have painted or built over the years, and they have been moved around the garage and storage and never been put up. So now that the children are almost all full grown, we are getting around to it. I think my new hobby will be make sure wasps aren't living in all the birdhouses. But at least they are finally out of the way. Another little project was to weed around this willow tree and get wood chips around it. Looks a lot neater. 
the dogwood is turning color, it's always ahead of the rest. Makes for a really pretty place to sit in the evenings. We're also finishing up the last of the tree cleanup and getting the wood out of the yard and stacked. At the beginning of the season, we transplanted many things into the deer fenced area. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off flower stems and some new growth. Maybe this will help the plants to focus on their roots and make it through the winter more easily. I don't do research on this stuff. This is something I've just heard before. I do not know if this is a good time of year. We are still going to get some pretty hot weather, but I have some back issues, so I can only do short amounts of garden work at a time. I just have to do a little bit over many days. Nearly all of the peonies have powdery mildew. The Russian sage in this area, though, don't seem to have the blighter mites that some of the others closer to the house have. When we were on vacation up north, the weather at home was scorching and most of the hostas in full sun ended up with a lot of damage. They also didn't get watered while we were gone. But for now, I'm just going to start cutting them back. You can hear how crunchy these got. I'm so glad the turkeys have still been coming around even without the cherry trees. They may have sensed my presence. On this day we've been cleaning up tree debris. We'll probably wait for cooler weather before tackling these dirt mounds where the trees work around. It will take some effort to level it out a bit and then bring in loads of dirt. Also expensive. Now I'm cutting back the sedum. The flowers are very pretty, so I'm going to try drying them. This one has a little visitor. He's moving slowly. Today we are cleaning out some of the dirt, wood chip mess where the stumps were ground. I decided to add it into the new flower bed because the dirt is so hard with clay. You can see that there was a lot of sawdust and wood chips mixed in. Putting down whatever bags and cardboard we had so we could dump the mix here. I do plan to add more plants to this area next year. Maybe this will break down a bit and make for better soil. I knew I didn't have enough paper to cover this new area, so I ordered butcher paper from Amazon. This paper isn't very thick. I don't think it's even as strong as a paper shopping bag. It also wasn't super easy to work with. It's much easier to use something thicker like cardboard. I also forgot to spray it down with water to help hold it in place. But it does cover an area quickly. Not sure if it will be enough to smother the grass effectively. Now I'm taking a few minutes to cut back the lavender. This was new this year. Always make sure to take your time and see where you're cutting. I'm always a little nervous that I'm going to cut a finger. The project on this day was to spread out the long clippings on the flower beds. My husband was helping me and didn't know it has to be spread very thinly. This is too thick. At least I prefer it thinner because it molds when it's too thick. It's also why it's important to spread this right away. 
Of course, it's pretty humid where we live in southwest Michigan. In a drier place, it may not be such a big deal. This is cuttings I put down last time. The kids mowed. Such a thin layer doesn't help smother weeds much, but hopefully it will help the soil in the long run. Had enough to do several flower beds. This is the mulch after a couple days. It's dried out quite a bit. Didn't film this, but did some major trimming in the deer fence flower bed. I don't know what this shrub is, but I felt it desperately needed a haircut. Also cut back all the lilies. This grass was a little thick, but it doesn't seem gross. More of the lilies I trimmed, they just looked old and messy. Picked up some new cutters or garden snips at Walmart. My old ones were sticking all the time, but I can see a sheen on these blades. I need to find out if there's an oil I can use on my old cutters. I was going to cut back all this mint, but the bees are loving it. I guess it can stay a while longer. Cleaning up these volunteer tomatoes, most of the ones you see have split or been on the ground a while. Volunteer raspberry, cutting this back and I do plan to move it. Missed cutting back these iris earlier in the summer. This area needs a whole lot of attention. All that should be in here are lilies and coral bells. This is the old vegetable garden that I'm using as a staging area. Got all the lilies cut back a bit and just left the leaves to mulch in the beds. Gathered up all the seed in my cut and put it into this vase to dry. There's no water in the vase. The colors are very pretty together. Not sure on the toxicity of these plants, but I don't have pets or little kids in the house. Always have to be careful with that. I just started looking up some of our plants and was shocked at how many garden flowers and shrubs are toxic. Okay, this is a Chinese dogwood that my husband grew from seeds. It's very pretty, but I think it needs a massive trim. It's very close to the house. Haven't convinced my husband yet, though. I noticed that something likes the fruit. There is a ground squirrel always running around, so it may be them. Not exactly yard work, but this garage rug really needed to be clean, using a little Dawn and the hose. Also wanted to clean this hammock. It has these awful spots all over it. Using some Dawn dish soap, I pretty much clean everything outside with this stuff. I feel like the dad from my big fat Greek wedding using the Windex on everything. I picked up this scrub brush to use on the garage floor, but thought it would be perfect for this. It didn't work. Somehow it looks even worse. Not sure what to do about this. Now it's time to wash off the plastic Adirondack chairs. Warning, there may be spiders or bugs. These chairs are affordable, but they have all these nooks and crannies. Our issue is mainly spiders and earwigs. The water really sprays back at you with these. 
This one had some kind of sap and some dirt or mildew. This brush is for washing cars, but it's working great on these. Got the stains off. These are much nicer and heavier chairs from Costco. They've just gotten dusty, so want to do a quick clean. Now that they're all clean, I remembered my husband was going to work on cutting a flatter top on this log today. He didn't, so they did stay clean a little longer. Cleaning off the brushes with more dish soap. It's September in Michigan, but we haven't had much rain here, so still have to water. At least I do, because I've planted or transplanted so many things this year. It does take some time. I see why people have automatic sprinklers and drip installed. Time to clean up all the sticks and debris from the giant stick pile we had out back. I'll just do one load a day. We'll burn it in our little fire pit, so this will take a few days. Another project was to repaint this table. It's a great size for all the things we need when making s'mores. I'm spraying it with some black Rust-Oleum. Got some more cardboard to add to the new east side flower bed. Hoping we can get wood chips in the next few weeks to finish all the projects I've started. It's going to take more than a couple loads with our trailer. Cutting back more plants, I think I enjoy this too much. It just makes things look neater, but I feel I may be a bit heavy handed with it. These are not the right gloves for a barberry. It's very thorny. This is still be was planted last year. So these sweet potatoes were left in the pantry too long and started sprouting. I thought I'd try planting them. Not sure if they'll sprout up next spring, but I'll keep an eye out. We are guessing at how to plant these. I picked this up to plant by our new patio, but that's not happening this year. I think it's a creeping speed well. I did want to at least get it in the ground. I also wanted to cut back this Russian sage. It has been sickly the last couple months. Not sure if it's mites or diseased. It happened last year too. I hope to get rid of the enormous grass in this area, which should give more light to the sage. Maybe that will help. As one does each fall, it's time to scrub up the cauldron. Actually, I just found this in the old shop at my great grandmother's place. I don't think it has been used for any spells. There are holes in the bottom, so pretty sure it's just a planter. But it is time to commence the annual washing of pots and other random yard items. The dogwood is turned red, but most of the other trees are still green, including this sassafras, except this one branch, which is just on fire. Hubby is going to cut down the dead sassafras branches for me soon. I want to paint them for Halloween decor. They're a lovely, creepy form. Finally, some rain. The turkeys have really enjoyed roosting in the honeysuckles and on the fence. Maybe roosting isn't the right word, they're resting or chilling. It's the last day of September and it's hot. 
at least it's shady here to unload this load of wood chips. This was two scoops. Hubby thinks it was about $120 total. These are cedar chips and they seem more finely shredded than last time, which is fine. I put down two rows of butcher paper along the back of this bed where we needed to finish mulching. I did remember to water it down and it stayed in place okay. Also took out the ivy around the red bud and mulched it. The ivy has been driving me nuts. It's very hard to weed. So that's the rundown on our September yard work. Lots more to do. Thanks for watching.